Hey guys, welcome back to the Basement Machine Shop channel. I'm Brad. Today's video is going to be a project. We're going to we're going to make a part for our lathe. Um, many of you out there buy lathes, buy machines secondhand uh, from Craigslist or from eBay or a machinery dealer, whatever. And you you know you find that your lead screws are messed up. They could be damaged, uh, or maybe you're just not happy with the backlash in your lead screws. So today we are going to make a compound lead screw for the South Bend 13 and uh, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff in here. We're going to use the follower rest, we're going to use an Acme, uh, an Acme threading tool and uh, stuff like that. So let's go to the bench, we'll take a look at the, the small drawing I put together and we'll, uh, we'll get started. What I did is I removed the compound screw Okay, mine's mine's in great shape. This is actually uh, when I restored my lathe, I found a, a brand new screw. Uh, I don't know if it was if it was shop made or if it was uh, new old stock, um, but this was a brand new screw. But I, you know, I just wanna just want we're just making one today, um, an extra, if you will. Um, so what I did was I removed it and I just, you know, I kind of held it up here and just made some quick transfers, and then uh, I measured it. So what we're dealing with is about a six, a little over a, about a six inch screw. Um, the Acme threads here are uh, a 10 pitch. We have 497 uh, and a half for the diameter here. Um, yeah, I didn't like this one either. All right, what I've done was I removed the screw out of my compound. Now this, there's nothing wrong with this screw. This was a new old stock screw that I found when I was restoring my machine. Um, but I I just removed it to grab some measurements uh, so we can make another one. Um, it's about a six inch screw. The thread pitch on here, this is going to be an, uh, a 10 pitch Acme thread, number 10. Uh, I ground the bit, high speed steel bit. We have it, it fits fits perfectly into there as you can see and it also fits very nice into the thread itself so we have our tool bit ground <clears throat> we have some basic measurements here the one thing the one measurement I didn't get was this overall uh, measurement and uh, where it's critical I should say is is all these measurements from here out are critical and measurements you know from here out are critical except this length and what I what I mean by that is this this length here could can run wild and then you chop it off okay to fit your ball crank okay so we'll make this a little bit long and then what we'll do is we'll chew it down to make it fit perfect so I'm going to use this center collar as my reference um, again I pulled all the measurements measured them Put them onto the drawing. The one thing that, again, that I haven't done was uh, I haven't measured this. So we're going to take a quick measurement on that. We'll use our height gauge because this isn't long enough. <laughs> so we'll have a little fun. We'll use the height gauge. If you got it, use it, right? Again, this is gonna this is gonna be just a, a a rough ballpark measurement. You know, again, we want this to run wild and to be a little bit longer, but I just want to get a general idea of how long to cut the stock. Uh, so there we go. Six inches, five hundred, not yet five fifty, so five hundred thirty two. All right. So six inches, let's write this down. Overall length will be six inches, 532 thousandths. Now you can see I removed the compound, I cleaned it all off, made sure there's no chips getting in there. Um, we don't want to have to clean this screw again, that's for sure. Uh, so, 
we're all cleaned off we got the compound disassembled we took our measurements from the screw what we're going to do is we're going to obviously we have to put it all back together again to make <clears throat> to make a to make the screw that's a word of warning if you plan on redoing one of your screws your cross feed screw or your compound screw you uh if the screw is damaged and doesn't work obviously you can't use your lathe to make the screw so you'll have to either use somebody else's machine or commission somebody to make the part that you're after uh, other than that you'll have to you know use the uh the old screw to make your new one now the order of operations that we're going to do this with is going to be like this i'm going to i'm going to clamp the stock in the four jaw chuck and I'm going to machine down this edge to um, 308 diameter and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a die and do the 5 16 24 threads um, because I have a 5 16 uh, collet I can clamp that in there um, use a center support it and do most of my machining so the stock we're going to use is this bar of 1215. It machines real nice and uh, I don't know, I have good results with it. Now I like to get the part pretty much in place, you know, using the rings of the four jaw chuck and I use, you know, two chuck keys. It just makes it a lot faster for me. Alright, so I use the rings, I use the two keys and man, look at that for uh, just for an eyeball. That's without an indicator. And now what I do is I just look for the lowest spot. Man, it's out a thousandth of an inch only. <laughs> Alright, so it looks like that's the low spot. <laughs> as soon as I'm filming a video, the, the vacuuming has to start upstairs. Isn't that always how it happens? There you go. That's pretty good. All right, I'm going to establish a, a face off here, um, starting point, and then I'm going to basically I'm going to turn this down about an inch, solid inch. Again, this is going to be the the section where the ball crank goes, and it's the five sixteenths thread. But I'm going to make it a lot longer. I'm going to you know run it wild basically, so I have some meat to grab on with the uh, with the collet, and then I could always just cut it off. So we're going to. We're going to face this off, get our point, our reference point, and then pull back an inch. Three ten, two thousandths. So that means a thousandth on each side. Big. I could live with that. I could always polish it down. So this is good. So that will fit our collet just nice. All right. So next step is we're going to flip this around. We're going to load it in the collet. I'm sorry. We're going to flip this around. We're going to uh, center drill it. Um, cut it to length, I should say, and then center drill it. Now the whole length of this screw is going to be about six uh, six inches, three hundred thousandths. So I, I ran it wild here. You know, I measured it out. I ran it wild so I could have some uh, some meat on it to pin it with the center and have some room to do my threading. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put it here in this collet and uh, I'm gonna part it off. Now my three jaw chuck is having some issues, um, so I'm gonna use collets whenever possible. Uh, I kind of like using collets. I probably mentioned that before, but <clears throat> now I'm, I'm going to be running this at a a pretty low RPM for uh, for parting with carbide, <clears throat> uh, about 300. Let's see here, 
385 RPMs. Um, I'm going to push this right in. Automatic feed. And we're going to go in hmm, probably about 12 thousandths per rev. It's an aggressive feed. But uh, that's what I found works on this machine. Alright, bring it over to our mark. Lock the table down. Carriage, I mean. And here we go. my slug of stock down here in the chip tray. Let me get it. As you can see we got ourselves a, a nice finish. That went without a hitch. So that's carbide. That's my new ISCAR tool that I got. Um, I'll let you take a peek. That's this guy right here. So you might want to Pause on the part number, but this thing is uh, this thing's pretty cool. It does a real good job. It's a sixteenth of an inch, I believe. It's new. It's uh, I guess it's what Iscar just came out with, but their rep brought it down. You know, had a guy come down and uh, he, uh, you know brought it down let me try it out we experimented with, uh, with feeds and speeds and we tried different metals and um, yeah it worked out good so I gave him the business and I'm happy with it I really am happy with it all right we're gonna set up now and we're gonna drill this out and uh, get this thing going on centers Alright, we gotta change collets now to a, a 5 16 collet. Okay, so we got our piece trimmed. You know, the first thing that I want to do to turn this screw is I'm going to go from this side. This is the side where the little threads are going to be that holds the ball crank. Um, so I need to come over from this inside edge uh, over 5 eighths. Now there's, a, there's two 1 eighth, 1 eighth wide by about, eh, about an eighth or so. Uh, I'm sorry, about a sixteenth of an inch deep. They're little clearance sections um, that divide a couple of the different diameters here. So we're going to use this high speed steel uh, parting tool here. I just ground it, I honed it, it's nice and sharp and uh, I just got it squared up to the work so we make perfect uh, entrance here. <clears throat> Alright so what I need to do now is come over from here 5 eighths of an inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make contact on the inside, touch off so to speak, And I'm going to use my dial indicator on the mag base here, since I don't have a DRO. Alright, let's try it again. We're at 
zero. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, ten, twenty. Five. All right, let's mark it. Stick there. Now, to be safe, I want to measure this. That's a little bit two thousandths oversize. Which isn't bad, because I could always face this. Alright, that's not too bad. <clears throat> that gets me started. But really, this is this, this middle point, this center ring, which I'm calling it, is where all my, all my dimensions are, are kind of pulled off of. Alright, just to give you an idea of what, where we're at right now. This right here is, is, uh, this is the center ring that I was talking about, okay? And this is kind of how it's orientated in the lathe right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring down this diameter right here and we're going to bring down that diameter. And the first one is going to be 408 thousandths we're coming down to. So... admit I just lost count spinning this thing around it's uh the dial goes to 250 and yeah I lost count so what we got to do is we got to use our old school calipers here okay 522 114 thou I am going to go with, I'm going to feed in a hundred, all right, and then I'll uh, fine tune the 14. kind of tricky and it requires a very light touch it's something I'm not used to all right four four twenty one yep four twenty one exactly <clears throat> Yep, 13 thousandths to go. So we're going to put this back to... Alright. Bring it back to 100, we'll feed into 113 and we should be good.
going 10, 11, 12, 13. What the hell is making that squeak? All right, moment of truth. Now I know, I know there are other more accurate ways than this, so I'm not a machinist. I just play one on YouTube. 410. Well, I'll go in and I'll just kiss it and call it a day. Alright, the next one now will be this guy right here. Um, do I want to do it that way? Or do I want to turn that diameter down? I think I want to turn this diameter down right here since it's the bigger one. This will be a 436. So let's, uh, let's do that. Let's turn that guy down. Do a little left hand turning. step this up a little bit to nine thousandths per rev. <clears throat> We're looking for 436. Now I, I purposely left what I think is about a thousandth so I could polish it. 425, 35, 36, 37, 437. You know what? Before I before I before I polish this. I'm going to turn the other diameters down and then go in and do my, my grooving. Okay. Get these chips out of here so I can see what I'm doing. Now from the face, I need to come in ooh, Five eighths, so that's six twenty-five, and I need to bring it down to three seventy-three. Let's 
take some measurements. Let's see where we're at. <clears throat> All right, we're looking for 373. Will it be that? Three seventy four and a half. Ah, perfect. That's a thousandth big on each one. Gives me a little bit of play to uh, to polish them out now. I need my my uh, <clears throat> optivisors here because I just can't see. All right, reset the base, the indicator base, and now we are going to come across one inch and five eighths. One, two. Alright, we got this little recess cut here now. I probably went five thousandths a little a little shy here, which is why I got that little ring. Uh, let's clean it out. Alright, I like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the center ring here down to the 592 diameter. This is a difficult measurement for a southpaw like myself. A little chatter on that. This piece is getting awfully springy. Now let's turn this guy down. I'm going to do that with my right hand turning tool now. You know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just continue with the left because the one thing I do like about this left hand turning tool is it keeps forcing the work towards the center and it keeps it pinned in there nicely. For this cut, we're, we're almost to diameter, but the, 
part is very wobbly right now and I don't have any room for a steady. So what I did was I called upon our old favorite high speed steel bit and I'm just taking nice little shaving cuts. It's working pretty nice. Yeah, if you didn't hear me, um, this part is getting flimsy now and it's wobbling around. So I brought the high speed steel to kind of, I don't want to say shear, but just to kind of, you know, take some nice, nice shaving cuts away. All right. We're about at 510 throughout. Uh, maybe not. We're at 514 there. 511. 510. Alright, so you can see what's happening. It's uh, It's got like a bit of a bulge. So I'm going to go with the lowest number there. That's 510. So we need... Oof, we need 13 thousandths. 13 thousandths we need. Alright, here's what we got so far. It's coming out pretty good. I mean, uh, got some chatter on here. Probably should, should have used a high-speed steel bit on the whole thing you know, start to finish. Uh, because, you know, when you're dealing with these smaller, flimsier little rods like this, um, and uh, using a lathe like mine, I think high-speed steel would have been the better choice. But, you know, you live and you learn. And I'm uh, just familiarizing myself with all the carbide stuff. And it, I mean, it worked good. It worked good. Um, over here, you could see, I don't know if you could see this, because of the focusing. But right over here you'll see some chatter all along the side here. And that's really from trying to get a tool in there. The back of the tool rubbed it accidentally, so I kind of just bumped into it. But this uh, this Acme surface is dead on. We're at 497 and a half. I mean, it might fluctuate to half a thousandth a little bit here, but we're dead on. You know, we have a lot of extra room here to saw off. Most of this will get sawed off parted off actually and uh, we're just gonna I don't know maybe about three-eighths or so will be threads right here and this is gonna be the ball the the ball crank will be right on here so it's coming along now we're gonna get set up for Acme thread we have the shaft mounted now uh, in the collet and uh, I got my Acme tool ground it's square to the work I used it I used the uh, the tool to get it square. I have the compound at 14 and a half degrees, right? This is all standard Acme uh, jargon, <laughs> Acme rules of the road. Um, so here here we go. I'll just I'll throw the formulas out here. So we have to go in at a depth of um, 60 thousandths and ha 60 thousandths. And how I got that is there's a formula depth equals the pitch divided by 2 plus 10. So the pitch, being 10 threads uh, per inch, comes out to 100 thousandths. 100 thousandths divided by 2 uh, plus 10. So in other words, 50 thousandths plus 10, 60 thousandths. Now to set the compound, okay, uh, we have to go in 60 thousandths, but the compound is at, a, it's at an angle, uh, 14 and a half degrees. So to spare you all the trigonometry and whatnot, there's a formula that you need to look up a secant uh, in the trig table. So I just I'm just copying the formula here. Um, the secant of 14 and a half degrees is 1.032. You could get that in a trig table. So the hypotenuse, which is going to be how much the compound goes in, uh, is is the the depth times the secant 
and it comes out to 62 thousandths. So I will be feeding in 62 thousandths on the compound to achieve my 60 thousandths depth. <clears throat> All right, again, everything is set up. It's ready to go. I got my gearbox set to thread. Uh, to <laughs> I got my gearbox set to 10 threads per inch. I got the lathe and back gear. Uh, we're going to take a, scr a scratch pass. Let me get my threading gauge. 10 threads per inch. Let's get it going. Remove all our junk from here. Get some threading oil going. And let's get it on. Now this is, a, being that this is a compound, this is normal um, right-handed threads. It's an even amount of threads, so I can use any, any mark on the threading dial. Alright, so I'm going to feed in ten thousandths. Put a little oil. And go. space here to run out which is nice a lot of room where is my brush I'm fairly confident that my lathe is doing the right job here and we are dead on 10 threads per inch so everything is a go we'll back out Turn this to zero. Normal threading as we as we know how to do. Sixty-two thousands. Let's take another ten. What's nice about running at a slow speed is the oil kind of clings to your piece nice and you don't have to you don't have to always drizzle so much oil on it. It kind of swims in a bath of oil. Even the threads that it cuts, you know, I can still see it's they're they're filled with oil.
looks nice. I'm going to trim this down now a little bit uh, so I don't have to thread the whole thing. going easy now just breaking the chips every quarter turn or so just gonna thread right to the shoulder and then what I'll do is I'll back it out and go the opposite way because you could get a little closer and then I'll just cut a little relief in it it's not a very long uh, threaded area. That's about it. I could just use my parting tool just to cut a small little relief in there. There you have it. Finished compound screw for the South Bend lathe. So I'm unscrewing the bushing, which holds the old screw in place. I'm not going to remove the screw from the bushing. And now we'll just take it out. My concern really is um, having the screw fit inside the nut nice and see what kind of play we get. Okay. the truth. Oh yeah, look at that. I'm trying to move it forward. You know, it's going side to side obviously because it has no bushing, but forward and backward there's no play at all.
quite happy with that. Um, now I know all my measurements were were spot on with this. They were all the same. Um, I think maybe in another video what I'll do is I'll take the dial because I have to drill this uh, two set screws to get the whole dial to, to fit on here and frankly I don't want to go through that right now but you know the the video was really just to make a spare compound screw and uh, you know show some Acme threading and whatnot and what not to do with uh, direct reading dials so I'm gonna wash this up and we'll go take a look at it on the bench now we're gonna just take a look at the measurements and see if everything is according to plan so you know things started off as this little chicken scratch and then we refined the drawing a little bit and then uh, we have our part here so let's take a couple of measurements alright so we're gonna go from the front of this face to here should be three and seven eighths so we're just proof in this piece I think that looks pretty good in fact that's spot on three and seven eighths uh, this guy here this little gap here should be three eighths alright again this is just clearance it's not all that critical but yeah the furthest it comes down is three eighths uh, from this left side of this ring's face to this first shoulder is an inch and five eighths and there it is inch and five eighths and then the next one is two and a quarter and two and a quarter and then um, let's check some diameters now and I'm not pulling out the mic I'm just gonna use some digital calipers here set to zero so this guy here should be 497.5 I'd say we hit the mark <laughs> this guy in here is 361 we are a little bit big 360 367, ah, six thousandths. Um, this guy here should be 592. It's 592. 592. This guy here should be 436. We're at 436. And then this one is 373. Five. Whoop, yeah, look at that. Come on, baby. Three seventy three five. Right, three seventy three five. This one should be three oh eight, these threads. And uh, yeah, you know what I the, Well it's three eleven, but I used a die on this. Um let me get the let me get the little uh nut to see if the nut fits perfectly. All right, the moment of truth. This is the South Bend nut that's original to the machine. Yeah, I mean, that fits perfect. <clears throat> so I would say that that's a successful piece right there. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I don't need a new screw. I could make one. I have a pretty brand new screw in my, in my compound right now. I'm going to give this away. Okay, so the first person who comments on this video and says, I want the screw, right? you don't have to use that exact uh, wording, but the first person who steps up and says they want it, you need to send me a picture of your lathe. I guess that's kind of like my fraud protection. Um, you know, let me believe that it's your lathe. I mean, don't download a picture from the internet and try to just take the piece from somebody but there's guys out there who have a, th a South Bend 13 and probably could use a new compound screw so you know the first person who steps up gets it alright fellas well that's it 
this was a fun project to make. I, I really enjoyed it. And uh, I'm going to enjoy even further giving this away to somebody who can actually use it. And I'm curious to see how it will, you know, it will uh, perform in somebody else's machine. So again, if you want the screw, be the first one to let me know you want it. Leave me a comment. Send me a picture of your lathe. Um, you know, basementshopguy at gmail.com. Send me an email. First come, first serve. I only have one of these. Um, so we got more videos coming up soon. I know uh, it's been a while since I made you know a video, and this one's come out. But April in Pennsylvania is you know return to life month. So you know we're getting things ready, getting uh, grass cut, and just you know things in order coming back from uh, from a long cold winter. So uh, we got some more videos coming. So stay tuned for that. And until the next time. See you soon. Thanks.